tonight on 16 by 9. It's a danger you may not have heard anything about. Surgical fires in the operating room. They heard this popping sound and they didn't understand what the noise was. They did stop and look around, but nobody initially realized that it was actually the patient that was on fire. Rockstar update. New details about JD Fortune's bizarre departure from in excess. I now have a commitment to keep it alive. Well, if you have to work, you might as well try to get the best job in the world, right? Apparently, that job is in Australia, and a Canadian just might get it. I think the Canadians really showcased the adventurous spirit that Canadians are known for all around the world. That's all coming up on 16 by 9. Please don't touch the camera, that's assault. Talk to us about this. I don't need to talk to you. Can you have me? Oh, I'm sorry. Surgical fire in three, two. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. Imagine going under for surgery, thinking that when you wake up, you'll feel better than ever. Then imagine that during that surgery, a fire erupts while you're on the operating table. It happens more often than you think and can have disastrous results. Our Mary Garofello now with an inside look at the phenomenon known as surgical fire. And a warning, some of these images may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. All these burn victims weren't taken to the hospital looking like this. This happened to them while they were in the hospital under anesthesia unable to scream that they were on fire. Jan of Maple Ridge, BC, who asked us not to show her face, says she went to have her gallbladder removed. But when she awoke, she was stunned by the severe pain in her back. She says she called the nurses, and even they were shocked at what they saw. Once they lifted the back of my gown up, they're, they're, they had their hands to their mouth, and their, their mouths were wide open, and they called other doctors to come in and look at this, and then they realized it was a burn. Jan's back had been severely burnt, and doctors didn't even know it. And Jan was under anesthesia and couldn't alert them that something was wrong. Oh, it was really bad. It was like pouring hot water, extremely hot boiling water over. And right in the middle of the back, I couldn't even look at it. I started to cry in the hospital. Jan says doctors never admitted to her what had happened. It, it could have been the pooling of the solution that they wiped down the, um, the table with. I was furious. I said to them, how can, you, how can you not know what burned me? She was completely unable to help herself while she was on fire. A frightening thought, but it actually happened to this woman's mother, Catherine Reuter. Kathy Lake and her mother had a wonderful relationship. She was a loving mother and a deeply religious woman. She was once a nun, and at 72 years of age, she had gone into the hospital for heart surgery. They used a flammable skin prep um, to clean the skin, and apparently during this uh, prep process, some of the antiseptic pooled behind her right shoulder, and after they draped her, the vapors stayed trapped underneath the draping. And when they started the bovie, they heard this popping sound, and they didn't understand what the noise was. They did stop and look around, but nobody initially realized that it was actually the patient that was on fire. Kathy says doctors came out and told her about what had happened in the operating room to her mother, but she says they brushed her injuries off as sunburn-like. Does this look like a sunburn to you? Uh, I was pretty shocked going forward. It was just pretty disgusting. Kathy's husband, Mitch, is a firefighter and knows something about surgical fires in the operating room. He says he thinks this kind of accident is often kept quiet. I think there's a lot we don't hear about. I think there's a lot of, of surgical errors and mistakes in hospital care that we don't hear about. Uh, I think things are, are you know, either ignored or intentionally hidden sometimes. Kathy says her mother recovered from the burns, but they were a catalyst to other problems that eventually killed her. 
it took a long time. She never got off the ventilator. She had all sorts of infections that come along with having the burns. In addition to that, her kidneys failed. Kathy began to learn all she could about this relatively unknown medical accident they call surgical fires. With the initial research I did, um, there's three things that should never come together in an operating room, and those three elements are uh, fuel, oxygen, and an ignition source, and that's what happened. Those three came together in my mom's procedure, which caused a fire. She started a website called surgicalfires.org and started to receive calls and photos from victim after victim. She soon realized this was a bigger problem than she'd ever imagined. I'm amazed at the amount of people that have reached out and contacted me sharing their stories and, um, you know, how they feel about this. The higher the percentage of alcohol, the more dangerous it is in the operating room. Dr. Sammy Sleewin is a plastic surgeon in Toronto. He gave us a demonstration on how easy it is to spark a surgical fire. This is cautery. It would this be is like a fire. handheld cautery okay. right? to, to cauterize a blood vessel. Let's say you got the 70% alcohol. So there'd okay. be some other medicine in it, plus the 70% alcohol. You put it here, and let's say you wash the face, right? You do, you know, you're prepping the face, okay? Okay. And you don't wait long enough. Whoa. And now. And so that's how it would start. And see how fast that. That flame. And that's how it would start. That's why Dr. Sleewin says in his practice, he uses products with no alcohol in them at all. These are the products that I use in my operating room. So the first product is the one that I use for every time I do surgery, and it's called uh, Technicare. And it's a 21st century prep. So this is a quaternary ammonium. It has zero alcohol. According to the American Medical Association, there are about 650 surgical fires a year. That's out of 20 million operations. The Canadian statistics are not as clear. I suspect that more fires than that occur and aren't reported. So, so the, the actual numbers aren't known. Dr. Bryce Taylor at Toronto General Hospital says, in operating rooms full of controlled oxygen, a surgical fire is every surgeon's worst nightmare. Fires start, and of course this is just one of the things that we, uh, we are afraid of most in surgery. 70% alcohol has been the gold standard for sterilization, but many hospitals and doctors aren't using it anymore because of the risk of surgical fires. Well, it, some people use it, I think, uh, fairly commonly for any surgery. We don't tend to use alcohol-based uh, preps here uh, very much at all. We do use alcohol-based preps for central lines, which are main intravenous lines that are put in around the head and neck to monitor blood pressure and so on. Uh, it's very important, though, if you're going to use an alcohol-based uh, prep, to make sure that it dries totally and that it doesn't pool. In the meantime, Kathy Lake says it is now her mission in life to let everyone know about this potential danger inside the operating room and what patients can do to prevent it. Patients shouldn't go into a hospital and come out damaged, worse than they went in. If they were sick and they went for help, they shouldn't come out burned. See, I started the website because my mother was, you know, concerned that this had happened to her and she wanted to make sure that others didn't suffer. Um, the same as she did. Next on 16 by 9. I'm moving faster than you. Those people want to come hang with me. It's a rock star redo. Do you think you'll ever play with them again? If you have a story for 16 by 9, call our tip line.